the breaking news that the former Prime Minister, Theresa May, has announced she is standing down at the next election. The former Prime Minister told the Maidenhead advertiser she has taken the difficult decision to step down after 27 years representing the constituency, saying it had been an honour. Joining us now is our political correspondent, Alicia Fitzgerald, and former Conservative advisor, James Price. Morning to both of you. Uh, so this news breaking in the last hour, uh, Alicia, that Theresa May is going to stand down at the next election. Yes, yeah, so former Prime Minister Theresa May and someone who has become quite a vocal critic of the current government as well um, has now announced that she will be standing down at the next general election. She is about the 60th Conservative MP to say... Uh, that they will be doing that at this election. So we're going to see quite a swathe of Conservative MPs actually leaving uh, at the next election. Um, and she has been an MP since 1997, has seen successive governments across various different parties uh, lead. So, so, yeah, quite big news that she's, that she's standing down. James, call me a cynic, but is this just because she's seen the writing on the wall, the Tories are toast at the next general election and shows she's going to announce it now and step away? No, I, I think that's not fair. I think that's probably the case with a lot of these, these guys who are, who are standing down. Theresa May has literally been at the top of politics for, for a long time. She's been a front bencher, I think, almost her entire career up to the Tories getting into government. She's the longest serving Home Secretary in a very long time. And that whilst she may have been criticised for various things at the time there, given that the difficulties we've seen in the Home Office since, I think she'll be considered a pretty big success there. Obviously, her time as Prime Minister was tricky. You almost <coughs> wish that her and Boris could have kind of swapped roles, get <laughs> Boris to have gone and got Brexit done, given that that was something he campaigned for, and having Theresa May take us through COVID. Through the COVID Can't imagine yeah. her having big, raucous parties, can you? Yeah. And I think it'd be now time to reassess sort of her success. Well, running through a field of wheat was the naughtiest thing she could <laughs> <ever> do. <done, so. laughs> I think we need to catch that. Did you catch that? Alyssa, you're going to have again, to do it again. again. There it is. Oh, no, there we go. We've got the real thing. We don't even let it. Here we go. <laughs> and, I mean, James there suggesting, Alessia, that history will be rather kinder uh, to Theresa May. When you look back on her time in office, it might look better than perhaps commentators at the time would have suggested. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because I think we'll all remember when she was Prime Minister, she got quite a hard time. I mean, it was, it, a, it I was mean, a, a survival, really, wasn't it? It was. A struggle for survival. She got a lot of flack for stuff. And, of, of course, there were various things very significant events during her time as Prime Minister. But I think the thing that she's remembered for the most is Brexit and her failure to actually deliver Brexit. And that's obviously led to her resignation. And I think at the time, everyone thought that, you know, she was like... People were even saying she was the worst Prime Minister we'd ever had at that yeah. point. And then I think, sadly, as a result of what's happened after that, it's now kind of shone her that's in a really, it. really positive light. That's it. James, she presided over Brexit as Prime Minister. She presided over the Windrush scandal that destroyed lives as Home Secretary, and she was, rightly so at the time, um, criticised and derided by, by everyone. And now we're looking back and saying, actually, despite her being so terrible at both those prominent jobs, she was much better than what we've had since. Be careful what you wish for. Right. Yeah. Well, indeed. I mean, to be all party political for a second, I think that the roots of the Windrush scandal really happened under the Labour government that before the coalition. Of course government. you'd say that. Of yeah. course I would say that. <laughs> but no, I think, I think that this, the problem was that first year that she had as Prime Minister, she was incredibly popular, things seemed to be going well, and it was that disastrous general election, and we forget just how close we came to Jeremy Corbyn sneaking in there, right? And I think that was, that was the real fatal flaw from that moment on. But I think she's a serious person, had a lot of flaws, but a serious person who took governing really very seriously and cared a lot about her country. You know, when she stood down, as you broke into tears almost at the end, talking about how much she loved the country. And I think those kinds of qualities are things we should look for. You can quibble all you want about the failures. I think almost anybody probably would have failed to try and get Brexit done during mm -hmm. those kind of shenanigans where the, the parliamentary arithmetic didn't work yeah. and we were all so up in the air about things. I think that was... That was partly her fault, but I'm not sure anyone could do it. But for the, the qualities that she had, being serious and hardworking, I think we should be thankful. And Alicia, how poignant is it that she stood down on International Women's Day? Oh, that's a really good point. I mean, I don't Thank know whether... You. People keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether it was um, intentional or not, but, I mean, it definitely has some kind of res reson res resonance. Yeah. Is that the right word? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's early. I don't even have that excuse anymore. It's the second hour, so I can't even claim it's too early for you to talk. Um, but I think... Also, something that's really important about Theresa May is where she sits in the Conservative Party as well. So she's what they call a one-nation Conservative. Those are the Conservatives more towards the centre of the political spectrum. And she has kind of 
emerged as a bit of a critic to those towards the rights of the Conservative mm -hmm. Party. She stood up in pretty much all of the debates about the Rwanda scheme. She's really, really pro uh, net zero and, and the green agenda. She's kind of been a subtle crit cr criticizer of, of those on the right, which has been really interesting in the past few months. So what next for her? Why? What's her reasoning for standing down now, apart from, you know, abandoning a sinking ship? Well, I mean, in her case, it's a, it's a rock solid safe seat, and, and she's been a genuinely, I think, assiduous uh, local MP. So, I don't think and she, she made was... this announcement to her local. Yeah, newspaper. exactly. That's very Theresa May, isn't it? Um, I, I, so I don't think she's in any personal risk of doing it. But you've been there, you've done it all. I think she's stuck around longer than most other recent um, ex prime ministers have done. I think that's been nice to see someone doing that kind of commitment. But now she's sort of perhaps seeing the glitzy lights that she's going to make some more money and go and campaign on other things. After almost 30 years, it starts to weigh you down. And maybe she thinks, well, it's a nice plum safe seat. You can get someone from a new generation in with energy to help the kind of rebuild that first the Conservative Party is going to need and then when Labour mess everything up even worse that the country is going to need. Yeah, well, she's held in high esteem even by some of the more hardcore Labour MPs. Jess Phillips has uh, tweeted something very classy about this being in the Maidenhead advertiser first. Mm -hmm. Love her or loathe Theresa May politics. She was famed for being a responsive and involved local MP. She wants to focus on um, the work that she's been doing around modern slavery and human trafficking. Um, the House of Lords? I mean, I don't want to speculate. Maybe, maybe. I mean, probably not right now, um, but I definitely wouldn't rule it out in mm -hmm. the future. Um, but I think for now, I reckon she'll probably steer a little bit clear, take some time away from politics, maybe just for a bit after the general election, and then who knows? Who knows what we'll see after that? Running through some more fields of wheat, perhaps. I think I think she's in the nice position where she won't need the platform of the House of Lords. And people forget as well, it's a working chamber. There's a whip on that means that people have to spend long, late nights voting on things and all the rest of it. So if she doesn't need that kind of platform, then perhaps she, she won't go there anytime soon.